Welcome to the Serie A Season Review as we look back over an enthralling 2022-23 campaign. From the title race and the chase for Europe to the relegation battle, this season had the lot in a campaign littered with memorable moments and iconic goals. Milan began the season as reigning champions, but after three different title winners in as many years, recent history suggested Stefano Pioli's men would be hard-pressed to successfully defend their Scudetto. Several of the pretenders to Pioli's throne were into their second seasons at the helm. As Inter and Juventus welcomed back former heroes in their bid for the Scudetto. Napoli took the opposite approach, dispensing with their established old guard as young talent from across the globe led their rebuild amid much scepticism. And some of those new faces quickly grabbed the headlines, with Serie A fans being fully immersed in the complexities of the Georgian language. <laughs> If Kvaratshelia was tough to pronounce, he was even harder to defend against as the winger began to showcase his enormous talent. And now Kvaratshelia steadying himself! Where on earth has he come from? and struck up a lethal partnership with Victor Osimen. Victor Osimen! And just like Faratelia, two in two for Osimen. Hungrier than ever in his third year with Napoli. Faratelia had been signed to replace outgoing Napoli skipper Lorenzo Insigne. While at the other end of the pitch, Korea international Kim Min Jae was proving the equal of his predecessor Napoli icon Kalidou Koulibaly. And both players would get on the score sheet in a comeback win at Lazio in early September. And it's you know who! Really five games into the Serie A season, but he has quickly become Napoli's chief protagonist. As Luciano Spalletti's men negotiated their first serious test. That match would mark game one of an 11 match winning streak. That would see the Partenope remain unbeaten heading into the winter break with a scarcely believable tally of 41 points from 45. Napoli hold on for their 11th win in a row, a club record set by Luciano Spalletti. A run made possible by resilience. Simeone! Napoli have come roaring back. One of their new faces with a huge moment. And brilliance. Osime! That is world class. And it might well prove to be the winner. With Osimen hogging the headlines. As one by one, opponents fell by the wayside. It's been given away. Victor Osimen for his first City A hat trick. But what of Napoli's challenges? Atalanta took a similar approach in the transfer market, turning to unproven newcomers. Look, man! Seals it with a debut goal. As Lookman caught the eye for Ladea with a helping hand from a dangerous Dane. Lookman's ball in! And there's the first goal for Hoyland. I went to, to, to Atalanta, a uh, very big club down here in, in Italy, and I'm very happy here. And 
it's a it's a good step and uh, the right step in uh, in my career. Lookman and Hoyland might have been scoring at one end. And an open net for Lookman. But the real revelation for Atalanta was their collective steal at the other. The Gasparini metamorphosis continues. The league's best defence make it five clean sheets. And after match day 10, Ladea was still unbeaten and just two points behind leaders Napoli. A home defeat to Lazio in round 12. Who was there? It was Mattia Zaccagni. Allowed Napoli to pull five points clear. Before a meeting of the top two in Bergamo in round 13. In Serie A, it's all going according to plan. Ten wins and two draws from a dozen matches so far. They've won each of their last eight. But Atalanta no slouches either. They've only lost once, which is why they begin this weekend as the Azzurri's nearest challengers. Few would have expected that. A season on from Atalanta finishing eighth. Another goal from Ladea's top scorer. It's Lookman and Atalanta take the lead against the side top of Serie A. Had Atalanta supporters dreaming big, but Napoli possessed too much firepower. Zielinski teasing it in. Ossiman is there. And again made light of a deficit. Elmas, the goal scorer, and Napoli have turned it around. To open up a six-point cushion at the summit. Another hurdle overcome by Napoli. Once again, there was a touch of adversity. Once again, they came from behind to win. A bad run of three straight losses to end 2022. Federico Baschirotto has his first ever Serie A goal. Would put a premature end to Atalanta's unlikely title bid. But the future still appeared bright for veteran coach Giampiero Gasperini with Hoyland and homegrown star Giorgio Scalvini. Rasmus Hoyland, edge of the area arriving, Scalvini! The young Italian breaks the deadlock. Both still teenagers by the time the Qatar World Cup came around. Milan proudly wore the Scudetto on their shirt. And besides that home loss to Napoli in round seven, their first league defeat since January. Napoli beat the champions. Milan's unbeaten sequence in Serie A comes to an end. And a minor slip in Turin. Alexi Miranchuk and Torino are flying. There's a Serie A shock brewing here. The Rossoneri stayed in touch with the leaders. Thanks in part to the quality of the previous season's MVP. Still Rafael Leal! He has now reached superstar status. Yet question marks remained about the potency of Pioli's second string. Corrigi in behind, Divo Corrigi. Fine stop by Carnesecchi. On the other side of the city, Inter, runners-up a season earlier, and Scudetto winners the year before that, made a series of false starts. It is a statement display from Lazio. Just like last season, they have toppled Inter. Losing four times in their first eight games. Aslan! 3-1 in stoppages! Three of which came against their rivals in the upper reaches of the table. Leaving their head coach under fire. Simone Inzaghi trudges off. He may yet hang on, but the pressure will be extreme on him. Inter would, however, rally to win seven of their next eight. Mkhitaryan! His first goal for Inter! And what a time to snatch it! A slice of luck that Inzaghi will take all night long. The one exception being the big one. 
It is one of the classics in the Serie A calendar. It is a traditional heavyweight battle. It is the Derby d'Italia. Kostic now, can he find a teammate? He can! It's Rabiot again! Suddenly he's back in the goals! That 2-0 victory in the Derby d'Italia was an example of Juventus at their clinical best. Fagioli! The kids are all right for Allegri! But too often the Bianconeri had been exposed as toothless. And 13 points from their first nine matches was underwhelming for Allegri particularly when set against Juventus's failings in the Champions League. But they did go on a run, and what a run, with their statement win over Inter. When the pressure was on, Juventus produced their most convincing performance of the season. Part of a streak that would ultimately stretch to eight consecutive victories without conceding. It's Moise Ken's night. Finishing the year with a bang. While the two capital clubs both boasted Scudetto winners of the past in their respective dugouts, neither Mourinho nor Sarri were genuinely expected to contest the league title. But that didn't stop them from producing some memorable moments in the autumn. 10,000 fans turned out to acclaim new Roma signing Paolo Dybala. And the Argentine sparkled in Giallo Rossi colours. Abraham, Dybala slides. 100 goals in Serie A. For Paolo Di Bala. Following up a goal scoring milestone. Spinazzola. Di Bala! It's in! The man snubbed by Inter in the summer comes back to haunt them at San Siro. With payback to a team that had decided against recruiting him. Rather than leaning solely on Giro Immobile, Lazio were learning to share the goals around. Pedro! It's too easy for Lazio. And they were firing on all cylinders either side of the international break. When the Bianco Celesti won three straight matches by the same 4-0 scoreline. Luis Alberto, that's clever. Milinkovic, Savic, Immobile. That is Lazio at their best. Now we come to the newly promoted clubs. Lecce took a while to find their feet back in the top flight, with just one win in their first 13 games. But back-to-back -back victories to close out 2022 saw the side from Salento flex their muscle. Small-town hero Federico Baschirotto wasn't one to shirk a hard day's work. Aver fatto scarico e carico di maiali, lavorare in campagna, in mezzo ai campi, sopra i trattori, ti forgia anche fisicamente perché sono lavori pesanti. While Falcone's hawk-like reflexes and Gabriel Strefezza's goal scoring did the rest. Strefezza! The talisman for Lecce! Late in the match! Cremonese was a new name for the younger generation of Serie A followers, and having waited 26 years to return to the top flight, Grigio Rossi supporters would need to show similar patience ahead of their first win, which wouldn't arrive until round 24 on the final day of February. Then again, they certainly picked their opponents well. Chopardy steps up and scores! Cremonese knocked Roma out of the Coppa Italia in the first day of February. And have they picked up their first win of the Serie A season on the final day of the month against the same opponents? 
Monza's rise to Serie A for the first time had been bankrolled by former Milan president Silvio Berlusconi and overseen by Wiley operator Adriano Galliani. But the pair had a decision to make after Giovanni Stroppa lost his first five matches. Di Gregorio, save of the match. Monza survive and pick up their first point in their Serie A history. Monza might have survived, but Stroppa did not. As Galliani promoted under-19 coach Raffaele Paladino to the top job and boldly compared the novice tactician to former Champions League winning coach Arrigo Sacchi. First up for Paladino, his former club, Juventus. And there is the goal! Good care with it! His first goal in Serie A comes against mighty Juventus. Maybe Galliani was onto something after all. Monza would not look back after that, and an Italian core was bolstered by a goal-scoring Brazilian. Più speciale non ce l'ho. Forse i più belli, magari con la gamba destra perché tanto sono mancino, quello a Firenze contro la Fiorentina che ha preso a volo anche di destro e e tante che anche i miei compagni scherzavano perché di destro sembra che tiro meglio che di sinistro. Elsewhere, it promised to be a long and miserable campaign for two former Serie A winners as Sampdoria struggled to stay afloat. Sampdoria, their nightmare continues. Marco Giampaolo's job hanging by a thread. And Verona's form fell off a cliff. Spezia inflict a tenth consecutive loss on Verona. The Scaligeri remain bottom going into the World Cup winter break. Napoli boasted an eight-point lead heading into the winter break for the World Cup, but come the end of the first match day back, that advantage had been whittled down to just five. Rafael Liao around Ochoa, can he finish? He can! However long he stays at Milan, the Rossoneri are going to enjoy every last second of it. Inter did their rivals Milan a favour by becoming the first team to topple Napoli. But the Rossoneri's title defence would hit a snag four days later after an inexplicable late collapse at home to Roma. And it's in for Tammy Abraham! Milan have thrown away a two-goal lead. Roma, in added time, are going to take home a point to the capital. From leading 2-0 at home to Roma to trailing 2-0 in Salento, a second-half comeback at Lecce couldn't paper over the cracks. Copenhagen in, Giroud, Davide Calabria, the Milan captain levels for the Rossoneri. It's a comeback draw for Milan, the tastes of a bitter loss, not just of two points, but perhaps also the Scudetto. Milan's defence, shorn of the league's best goalkeeper, Mike Mignon, through injury, just kept leaking goals. And now Felipe Anderson. It is all too easy for Lazio. Another four-goal show, but this one comes against the reigning champions. Berardi now. Enrique on his left. 5-1 Sassuolo. And it does seem that Milan have given up here this afternoon. With the two Milan clubs leaving themselves too much to do, the onus was on Juventus to try and deny Napoli a first Scudetto in more than three decades. Arcadius Milik! Juventus have left it late, but got the crucial goal. The Bianconeri appeared up for the fight, too. And there's a tap-in for Danilo. Another late show from Juventus. Closing to within eight points of the leaders, thanks to eight wins on the bounce. The sequence goes on for Allegri and Juventus. Once again, they got their noses in front. Napoli and Juventus would meet at the Maradona in mid-January, 
Style against substance, a master coach against a serial winner. Napoli against Juventus is many things, but first and foremost, it's a meeting of the top two. But any lingering doubts as to whether Napoli's time had finally come again... Kvaratelia! It might just be their year, and perhaps 33 years of hurt drifting away were comprehensively dispelled. Ellie Felmas, is this number five? Not just beautiful, it is winning football as well. And the gap between Juventus and the Serie A summit was about to become greater still, as five days later, Juventus were issued a 15-point penalty for irregular accounting practices. So at the halfway stage, Napoli sat a whopping 12 points clear. There would be no catching Napoli, as Luciano Spalletti's men won 19 out of 20 league matches between September and February. But in Italy's most superstitious city, no one was taking anything for granted. Sarei falso a dire che non abbiamo una grandissima opportunità quest'anno, però lo spogliatoio, la squadra sa bene che Mancano veramente tantissime partite e quindi non dobbiamo mollare di un centimetro. That freakishly good form naturally proved unsustainable and there were blips both small. Vecino! That is absolutely wonderful! And great still to come. Rafael Liao and still! What a way to upstage Quarazzelia! Milan have reminded everyone that they're the reigning Italian champions and they have humiliated Napoli at the Maradona tonight. Yet nothing could withstand the Azzurri juggernaut bulldozing its way to glory. And this is Raspadori! Giacomo Raspadori brings Napoli to within sight of the Scudetto. And after Salernitana had played party poopers... Still Bulaitia! Salernitana shock Napoli. Seven minutes to play and the title celebrations have been curtailed. Napoli would mathematically seal the title on a Thursday night in Udine. Onghissa! Kvaraskelia! Ossibe! The man who's led the line all season is the one to get the goal that will win them the Scudetto. With a record equaling five matches to spare. It's over. The 33-year wait is over. Napoli are the champions of Italy. With Napoli so comprehensively winning the Scudetto, the sides below them turned their attention towards clinching one of the three remaining Champions League places. When Lazio lost at home to Atalanta in round 22... Lookman, Hoyland racing through the middle. Hoyland looking to stay on side. Hoyland has scored! They were five points behind second-placed Inter. And two adrift of arch-rivals Roma, who also sat in the Champions League places. That result seemed to focus the mind, though, as the Bianco Celesti rediscovered their autumn knack of keeping clean sheets en route to 22 points from a possible 24, with plenty of highlights along the way. The big moment is taken by Mattia Zaccagni. The Bianco Celeste lead in the derby. Il derby è stata una partita forse la, la partita più sentita del, della mia carriera e si respira già da settimane prima la, la tensione, l'area di, di derby. Beh, penso che segnare il gol decisivo nel derby sia il sogno di, di tanti, tanti bambini e giocatori. È il derby più sentito sicuramente d'Italia, forse anche d'Europa, quindi penso sia il sogno di, di molti giocatori. Felipe Anderson. 
Luis Alberto, nicely done. Zaccagni, it's a glorious goal. Well, Lazio are winning the battle to be the best of the rest in Syria this season. Further wobbles were to come at San Siro in late April and early May. But in the end, Mr. Lazio would get the job done. Ciro Immobile yet again leads Lazio to victory at Europe's top table. How about Inter, the previous season's runners-up? There appeared little danger in February when a routine home win over Udinese left the Nerazzurri in second, five points clear of fifth spot. But old demons were about to re-emerge. First at the Dallara, scene of their abdication in 2021-22. Orsolini, the man of the moment, scores! And on the ground where Inter lost the Scudetto last season, they once again fall short. Inter were still creating chances, but an inability to score and ex-employees. Candreva's cross, the goalkeeper can't get there! Antonio Candreva, the former Inter player, has snatched a point for Salernitana. Kept coming back to bite them. Caldirola! The Inter youth. That meant Inter were outside the Champions League places with eight games to go. But just when Simone Inzaghi's marksman all began to miss fire, a familiar face... Lukaku! His first goal from open play in Serie A since August. Returned with a brace. Lukaku! The drought is over. The Belgian is back. And Lukaku's prolific streak became contagious. as Inter racked up five consecutive wins with 18 goals scored to move to within sight of sealing a top four finish. Lautaro Martinez leads Inter in a devastating performance. Until Inzaghi's rotation policy and ill-discipline got the better of the Nerazzurri. Di Lorenzo and still Di Lorenzo! The captain brings the house down. We left Milan during their mid-season malaise. After conceding nine in two games, Milan would suffer a third straight defeat in the derby. Chalanolu curls it in, Lautaro Martinez scores again against Milan. As Pioli changed shape and philosophy to try and emerge from their results crisis. And the Rossoneri slipped to sixth in the table. For a brief period, the switch to a back three paid dividends with the help of Malik Chow and a trio of shutouts. Boy, they needed that. It has been a terrible month for the Rossoneri, but green shoots of recovery, perhaps, provided by Olivier Giroud. Mignon would eventually return, but inconsistency continued to blight the Rossoneri. Jovic! A big goal in a big moment as Fiorentina take down the defending champions. And following a 3-1 defeat in Udine, Milan sat fourth, but just one point clear of Roma. Trailing Napoli by 23 points as they travelled to Naples, there was trepidation among the Rossoneri fan base. But the players showed no fear whatsoever. Rafael Leal! It's been a long time coming, but he has picked just the match to return to the score sheet. And Milan ran riot at the Maradona. Milan have saved their biggest win of the league season for one of the matches which mattered the most. Four draws in their next five, however, would cast fresh doubt over the Rossoneri's ability to make the top four. 
A shock defeat at Spezia seemed to spell potential disaster for the champions. Esposito goes for goal! Magnificent! But a reprieve would be just around the corner as Juventus were hit with a new 10-point penalty, catapulting Milan back into the top four. The two Milan clubs and Roma were doing Italy proud with impressive runs in Europe. But if their domestic form had suffered amid a packed fixture list, Atalanta had no such demands on their time, as Giampiero Gasperini set about guiding the men from Bergamo back towards a seat at Europe's top table. Three wins in the space of a week at the end of April had Atalanta right in touch. Welcome to the 100 Club. Luis Muriel. The men from Bergamo were just two points off the top four after seeing off Spezia. Yet three defeats from their next four would leave La Dea needing a win at Inter on the penultimate weekend of the season to keep their flagging top four hopes alive. Having won the Conference League the previous season, Roma would march all the way to the final of the Europa League. Sadly for the Giallorossi, prioritising their Thursday night commitments... That's a good-looking ball in! And Salimakas has equalised! ...would trigger a seven-match winless run. As Roma's reserves fell out of contention for Champions League qualification via Serie A. It was a real mixed bag of a season for Juventus. January's 15-point penalty was overturned three months later, before the Court of Appeal eventually settled for 10. With the news breaking, just as the Bianconeri faced Empoli in round 36. In this most unstable of seasons, the ground has shifted under the Bianconeri once again. Juventus were still dwelling on that penalty. And then it's Luperto! Empoli double, they're flying here! when Massimiliano Allegri's men shipped four goals at the Castellani. A dark day that will go down in infamy for Juventus. At the foot of the table, Sampdoria just couldn't find any momentum, with the club struggling financially and forced to part with several of its best players. A rare win for the Blue Cecchiati came in March against Verona. First Serie A goal for Alessandro Zanoli. But that was only their third victory of the entire campaign. And relegation to Serie B was confirmed on match day 34 following a defeat in Udine. After 11 seasons in the top division, Sampdoria will be relegated to Serie B. Cremonese managed to cling on to their Serie A status for a few weeks longer than Samp, but the writing was on the wall for the Grigiorossi. Despite bouncing back... Stunning turnaround that leaves Sampdoria on their knees. Cremonese claiming their first away win of the season. To defeat several of their rivals in the battle at the bottom. Bologna would eventually hit five at the Zini to send Cremonese back into the second tier. You knew it was over before, but this time it is becoming very, very difficult to watch for Cremonese supporters. The bitter pill of relegation was sweetened by a memorable cup run that only ended in the semi-finals after famous wins at Napoli and Roma. That left three teams scrapping to avoid the drop. One stage, Verona appeared certain to join Sampdoria and Cremonese, especially given the way they had ended 2022. But Marco Zaffaroni joining Salvatore Bocchetti sparked an upturn in fortunes at the Bentegodi. And here's a chance, one which is taken by Lazovic. Just eight minutes on the clock, and they have the all-important lead in this relegation six-pointer. Home wins in April over Sassuolo and Bologna. Verdi! He saved his best performance of the campaign for this match. Certainly gave Verona a fighting chance. Complacency seemed to be Lecce's greatest foe. 
victory in Bergamo in round 23 saw them do the double over Atalanta to sit 13th and open up a 10-point lead over Verona in 18th. But then the Salentini abruptly forgot how to win. Lecce took maximum points just once in their next 13 games, a sequence which would begin with half a dozen defeats in a row. It is the first time Paolo Tanetti has recorded maximum points since January. For Lecce, it's five losses on the bounce without scoring, and they are looking over their shoulder. But the most costly loss would come against Verona in round 34. What can he come up with here, the Belgian? And Gorge from distance! And his third Serie A goal might just be his most important one so far. And so on to Spezia, a team who had thrived at home to the big boys. Inter were shocked at the Pico on the 10th of March. Insula. He can tee up Maldini! You just knew it was going to be him! And Milan also fell by the wayside in Liguria on the 13th of May. The problem for the Aquilotti was those wins were their only victories in the second half of the campaign. With two rounds of the season remaining, much was still to be decided. Napoli had been confirmed champions several weeks prior, while Lazio had sewn up a Champions League place. But two spots at Europe's top table remained. At the other end, who would be joining Sampdoria and Cremonese in dropping down a division? Buoyed by their home wins over the Milan clubs, Spezia were hoping the Pico factor would lead them to victory over Torino. But how wrong they were. Richie! A dagger in the heart of the Pico. Spezia's biggest home defeat of the season in this crucial relegation battle. The Aquilotti were not up to the challenge. That capitulation handed Verona the initiative in what appeared a winnable home game against mid-table Empoli. But just when they thought they were out of the drop zone... Guys, There it is! Lift off for Verona! Empoli pulled them back in. The Giallo Blu undone with virtually the last kick of the game. Meaning Lecce improbably could save themselves with a week to spare. But only by defeating a Monza side on the back of an eight-game unbeaten run and chasing down eighth place. Lecce feared the worst when Baschirotta's brawn got him into trouble. Good care to sign off in style, saved by Falcone. It's a momentum shifter for the Salentini. In his final home game as a Monza player, Gutkier had an afternoon to forget. And Colombo did the rest. Lecce are staying in Serie A. It's absolutely confirmed now with the final kick of the game on the penultimate match of the season. Prompting wild scenes among the 2,500 Salentini supporters in attendance at Monza. Inter's Lautaro Martinez would sew up a top four spot against Atalanta. And Milan would only need a draw in match day 37 as they travelled to a Juventus side still demoralised by their points penalty and shock defeat at Empoli. The hero of the Scudetto the previous season. Giroud, yes! And with that goal, Milan take a big stride towards next season's Champions League. This time wrapped up the Rossoneri's place in the top four. With Verona and Spezia level on 31 points, there was a prospect of a relegation playoff to decide who would stay in Serie A. But only if the two teams recorded the same result on the final weekend. Leonardo Semplici's Spezia made a dream start in the capital. Nicolau and the first moment of drama here at the Olimpico Spezia strike first. And you can hear the groans in Verona. But it was back to square one as they approached half-time. Zalewski has players in the middle. And it's gone all the way through. Roma are level. 
Until some good news filtered through from San Siro. Penalty Milan. Giving Spezia back the edge. Olivier Giroud finds the corner. Milan heading to the break with the advantage. Verona's skipper then stepped up to make it a case of as you were. And Faleoni's found a way to get Verona level. And it is the Verona captain who gives them hope in this relegation battle. But with five minutes to play, Rafael Leal was being hailed as a hero by Spezia fans. Leal gets away. Put an exclamation point on this season! Rafael Leal! Yet, if added time giveth... Rafael Leal, the skills, the dribble, the goal. Added time also taketh away. Dybala to surely give Roma Europa League qualification and does. And after both teams lost, a playoff it would be. With that win over Spezia, Roma sealed Europa League football. And they would be joined in that competition by Atalanta. After a turn, Cope Miner's hat trick inspired them to a 5 2 final day win over Monza. Good Miners. We have just witnessed one of the goals of the season. Turn, Cup Miners, take a bow. Despite securing victory in Udine, Juventus's fate was out of their own hands. And they were unable to overhaul Atalanta and Roma. The Bianconeri would end the season in seventh place. Good enough for a spot in the Conference League. In previous seasons, Spezia would have stayed up at the expense of Verona by virtue of their superior head-to-head -head record. But in a change to the league format, the third and final relegation place would be settled via a playoff. Reggio Emilia was selected as the neutral venue, and both teams knew that if the score was still level after 90 minutes, the match would go straight to penalties. Lazovic getting the better there. Wisniewski, Lazovic. All the way through to Fareoni! First blood, Verona! Zola, Shumorodov, and this is Ampadu! That's the way to reply! His first ever goal in Italian football! Gorge, give and go, and Gorge! The Belgian comes up with goal number three, Verona's second. Gange gets the rub of the green. Now then, Cyril Gange back onto his right, twisting, turning, getting a deflection. And Verona have a two goal lead. Shumurodov, Shumurodov! Red card, Davide Faraoni hoisting the ball off the line with his hand. Spezia's talisman, Spezia's top scorer, up against Montipo. Unzola! What a save from Montipo! Verona live to fight another day. They ensure a fifth straight season amongst Italy's elite and end Spezia's Serie A journey. Verona are safe and Spezia are down. Several players shot to prominence over the course of the season. Kvica Kvaracelia wasn't the only tricky left winger in Serie A. Sassuolo boasted their very own French version of Kvara, Armand Loriente. No, I don't think that it's a position to but it's true that I find myself very often in this position. I play on the right and I'm on the right. I find myself very often on my right to shoot, so yeah, it's a position on which I can find myself very often. The points of amélioration, I would say, is to be more effective, to try to reach another cap. Empoli had developed a reputation for honing young talent. 
And the latest name rolling off the production line was graceful number 10, Tommaso Baldanzi. A player feared by his opponents and highly rated among his colleagues. Baldanzi è un giocatore un giocatore estroso, un giocatore di tecnica, velocità, rapidità, penso non gli manchi nulla, ecco. Baldanzi comunque è un bravissimo ragazzo e per quanto riguarda le sue qualità lo, lo vedo ad ogni allenamento ha delle qualità pazzesche, quindi spero che ci darà una mano e cercheremo di aiutarlo a crescere. Elsewhere, only two players found the net more than Salernitana's Bulai Dia, who struck 16 goals in his debut Serie A campaign. The Senegal international is not only potent in front of goal, but also extremely adept at getting the best out of his teammates. Uh, I love to play alongside him. I think uh, we have a very good connection. He's a very, very good player. Uh, and he's a very humble guy, very uh, likely. Uh, so nice to everyone, smiles, uh, just very good guy. Uh, and on the pitch, he's amazing. He, he's so quick and in front of goal, he's so calm, he knows what to do. So for me, I think he's one of the best players I, I play with in my life. It was a challenging season for Juventus, but one positive to emerge from the campaign was Massimiliano Allegri turning to young players. Fabio Miretti, Mattia Sole, and Samuel Illing Jr. all impressed. But one man stood out, midfielder Nicolò Fagioli, who was named the best under-23 player in Serie A. Sì, quando me l'hanno detto e l'ho letto, ero felicissimo perché comunque è un, è un premio importante per me, perché comunque è stata una stagione difficile, però nel frattempo è stata bellissima a livello personale. Ero felicissimo di aver aiutato la squadra ed ero felicissimo per aver raggiunto questo traguardo che sognavo fin da quando ero piccolo. Kvijak Varadzhelia technically qualified for the Young Player Award, celebrating his 22nd birthday with a goal against Cremonese. But such was the Georgian's impact, he took the biggest award as Serie A's most valuable player. Given the way they dominated Serie A, it was no surprise to see Napoli monopolize the individual prizes. At 64, Luciano Spalletti became the oldest man to win Serie A, and he would be named the league's best coach, before opting to leave Napoli and embark on a one-year sabbatical. Kim Min-jae capped an astonishing first season in the Italian game by being named Defender of the Year for his role in marshalling the best backline in Serie A. At the other end of the pitch, Victor Osimen's 26 goals not only secured him the title of Capo Cannonieri as the league's top scorer, but also earned the Nigerian the gong for Striker of the Year. Lazio finished as runners-up, and the bedrock of their consistency was their ability to keep clean sheets. Ivan Provadel finished the campaign with a record equaling 21 shutouts and was a worthy recipient of Goalkeeper of the Year. Nicolò Barella chipped in with six goals for Inter, and his increased output in the final third helped him be elected the league's best midfielder, the second time in three years he had claimed the award. Naples is a city that doesn't do half measures. So, in the spirit of nothing in moderation, the Napoli supporters fittingly had three opportunities to celebrate their third Scudetto, their first league title in 33 years. First, it was the turn of the lucky few who had secured tickets to Udine. When the title was mathematically sealed, guess when, in round 33. Then came party number two at the first home game as champions. Sanchenado's blood melted yesterday, but it is a footballing miracle being celebrated in Naples after 33 years in which it was always winter, but never Christmas. The ice has vanished, the sun is out, and the city is once again resplendent in blue and white. Finally, a routine win over Sampdoria at the Maradona on the final day 
set the stage for the moment when Captain Giovanni Di Lorenzo could at long last get his hands on the silverware. Napoli are the Italian champions. 33 years on, they win the title for the third time in their history. A dominant performance throughout the season from start to finish. Napoli-Sampdoria was Luciano Spalletti's final match in charge of the champions. But whereas the Tuscan was taking a year off, elsewhere some famous names in the Italian game called time on their playing careers altogether. Fabio Quagliarella fittingly bid farewell to Serie A at the Maradona, where he remained a hero just weeks on from scoring against Milan, aged 40. Zanoli with the cutback, and there is Quagliarella's goal. To extend an incredible feat of longevity. He is now on target for the 18th straight season in Serie A. The man from Castellamare di Stabia would finish up with 182 goals in 556 games across six different Serie A clubs. Quagliarella may boast more goals in the Italian top flight than Zlatan Ibrahimovic, but Ibra more than made up for that with his trophy haul. The Swedish legend took his tally to five league titles the previous season by inspiring Milan to the Scudetto, and very few players can claim to have represented each of Italy's big three, Inter, Juventus and Milan. But it is above all with the Rossoneri where his legacy lies. 156 goals in 283 Serie A appearances doesn't necessarily do justice to the genius of Zlatan. It is the end of an era in Italian football. Silvio Berlusconi passed away on the 12th of June, 2023. Before overseeing Monza's historic rise to Serie A, Berlusconi served as owner and president of Milan between 1986 and 2017. He purchased Milan with the club on the brink of bankruptcy and immediately claimed he would take the Rossoneri to the summit of the global game. That period in the club's history became synonymous with Berlusconi. And in that time, Milan won Serie A eight times, the Champions League on five occasions, and claimed three Club World Cups, 29 pieces of silverware all told. Silvio Berlusconi will be sorely missed by the Italian game, and our thoughts are with his loved ones at this difficult time. As an era in Italian football draws to a close, so too does this season's Serie A. We'll be back in August. See you then.